Hey, how's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Sam Wong's channel. Today, we're going to be building the premium Bandai High Grade Universal Century, the second V. So, most of you don't know that uh, actually uh, Victory Gundam got a variation called second V. It's, you know, a lot of people don't know it, including myself. Well, I personally didn't watch the Victory series because I feel like it just, you know, as the Universal Century moving forward to like the uh, 100 years or something like that, uh, their design starting to get a little weird. They look like monster and they don't really look like the gym or the Saku that we used to like and it just looks pretty ridiculous so I pretty much stopped watching uh, the UZ series after like F91. I stopped watching it so I never watched the Victory series because it, it never caught my attention anyway. So second V from what I researched uh, it was like a parallel universe so this appeared in the manga uh so in the anime it was at the final battle it was meant to be a v2 assault buster but in the manga it was the um it was the second v so it's kind of like it's kind of working like the new gundam and the high new gundam you know uh, this is the fa most famous example like you have high new in uh better Dochika's children and then you have the new gundam in the movie so that's pretty much how you're gonna explain it if you're gonna say that second v is pretty much a high new which means it's in the manga and then the v2 ab is just the uh movie version or you can call it like anime version anyway that's not really important so we're just gonna open up the runners first We're just gonna flip up the instruction menu so i have a look at the runners so i can pretty much tell that, that that's a lot of uh, improvement in there because uh, most of the part is newly molded and you know uh, it's been changed so i can basically tell that there's uh, plenty of new part in here so as we can see, uh, as we can see here we can see that there's a, a little introduction about it but i'm not going to read it so if you really like to read some information about the second v or you never heard of this ms i suggest you right now stop your video right here and then just look at it and then uh, at the down below we have all the uh, information about the weapons so uh, as usual, if you really want to go detail about it, just pause it here and then just look at it. And then right now we can look at it. Uh, so most of the parts of the second V, as we can see right here, is uh, newly molded. And uh, although some of our part is, uses the V2 Gundam and the previously V Gundam, uh, I saw some part that are used. So uh, that's pretty much it. So we're just going to quickly flick through the instruction menu. So, you know, just letting you have a look on what's uh, inside. So I believe that this um, this V uh, this second V is ca uh, is compatible with the uh, Victory Gundam Wing of Light expansion unit, but I don't have it, and I'm not planning to purchase one because I don't think it's worth it. So um, we're just gonna start looking at the runners first. So we have an E1 runner. This is from the Victory Gundam. As we saw in the instruction menu, there um, there there's one attendant that is extra. So that's it. And then this one right here, this is a torso part. We have two F runners. They are molded as second V. So I'm just gonna take one right here because they're exactly the same. So we can see that there's some arms part. We have some, we have the beam saber. We have the uh, backpack wings. We have the legs here. And then we have the, I don't know what this part is, but this is a uh, part of the backpack as well. And then we have some arms here. And then I don't know what part is this, but basically all the parts here uh, is the new part for the second V. Uh, this is a D2 runner, they use it on the V2 Gundam, so we can see that there's some feet part, uh, the head part here, and then we can see that uh, there's some uh, beam shield unit right here at the arms, so uh, I think it's all over here. And then we have a C runner, this one is uses the original V Gundam runner, so we can see that most of the blue part coming from the backpack, uh, the waist part, and we can see the torso part as well, so most of the blue part is just coming from here. And then we have a B part here, so the inner frame, this is part of the inner frame. We can see, obviously see the rifle. This one is used the V2 Gundam runner. So we can see that most of the inner part, and then we have the hands option here. We have the uh, all the inner joints of the MS in here. So including like arms, legs, um, arms, legs, uh, all kind of stuff here. 
and then next we have a uh, we have a G1 and G2 runner. They are both molded as new for the second V. So I'm just gonna take the G1 runner. We can see that this is the inner frame of the wings, I believe. And we have some. I don't know what this part is. I'm not really sure. I I'm, I think it's the uh, Minovsky unit, the one on the backpack, uh, the one that can extend into the shield. I think it's that one. Um, this two right here, I think it's the wings as well. Uh, this one right here, I think it's the backpack uh, connection. And this is right here, I think it's the wings, part of the wings as well. Uh, this is the inner joints. And then we have an A runner. This one right here is molded as second V as well. So this runner is newly molded specially for this kit. So we can see that we have the wings here. We have the we have the uh, side skirt, the torso, uh, and then we have some head unit, and then we have some side skirt here, head unit, and then we have the uh, the mega beam cannon part here, a uh, waist part, and then uh, the top part here. I'm not really sure. I'm I think it's the I think this one is the inner jaw of the mega cannon. I'm I'm just guessing. And then we have the beam, uh, the beam effect part. We have the shield. We have this uh, van beam saber, the fan type. And then we have the we have the regular beam savers here as well. And then we have the polycaps, very, very, very uh, standard polycaps. There's not much special. And then we have the stickers here. Now, you may look at like, oh my god, there's a lot of stickers. It's actually most of the stickers is just used for the joints because you know the joints supposed to be red, but it's a small scale gamma, so they can't really uh reassemble that kind of detail so they just give you stickers and other than that i think other part is just uh the sensor on the on the cannon rival eyes i think that's it so yeah so we finished everything so uh let's jump to the review so hello guys welcome back to the review so now we're gonna take a close look to the second v so when i'm building this uh i have a lot of surprises that i found because they actually reworked the whole xguz victory gun from top to bottom uh, when I look at the promotion pictures, uh, Bandai claimed that they will, you know, use new molds. And I don't really believe it because I know that a lot of premium Bandai, they claim to be using new molds, but actually they're just, you know, changing a bit of shape, changing what it looks like instead of fixing the real problem. But this time they fixed the problem. First, uh, they gave, they gave you more articulation. And secondly, I must say that the color separation on this thing for such a small model, uh, they do a very good job. They did a really good job about it, and I'm and I absolutely love it. And I gotta say that uh, the only concern that I have, uh, I will talk about it later. But the only concern that I have right now is because the backpack armor is at the whole backpack because it contains the wings of light, the huge cannon, and the shield, and is actually pretty heavy. So sometimes you if you if you purchase one of these second V, you will know that sometimes you will have problem where the second V will just probably like this, just leaning backwards. Um, so just make sure you get your position correct. Overall, I'm pretty happy about this Gampa. As a premium man, I, I really recommend you to buy it because um, I must say that 90, like basically 80% of the runners are completely new. They just use like, they just use the inner frame of the V Gundam and then they probably use some part of the V2. And that's that's basically it. They they did not use, they did not like recycle too much runner from the past. And this is a basically a brand new mold. So, um, for the value of the premium Bandai, I would just say that, um, this thing right here is definitely worth to buy anyway. So I'm not going to talk too much. So let's just dig into, uh, what this gamble changed. So first, let's look at the head. The head this time, the connection between the head, uh, is actually using a brand new part instead of just those, um, regular Poly caps. Uh, so this time the head articulation is pretty fine. Uh, it can move 90 degrees as well because, um, because you know, the V Gundam's head is actually pretty small. But the only thing that I don't like is that because there is a black sticker inside the vents over here. So that's why it sort of, it sort of have a gap. Um, when you assemble the head, uh, you see here, there's a gap when you assemble the head. That's the only thing that I don't like, but this second V contained the same problem, just like the Victory Gundam that it didn't fix. Look at this. <laughs> the antenna is very easy to fall out. So, but Bandai actually did a very good job. They gave you two antennas in the runner. So I suggest you don't throw away the, and don't throw away the, 
other antenna, keep it in case you lose it. So the only part that I don't like is that the antenna is so easy to fall out. My recommendation is you, yeah, my recommendation to you is just just super glue it. Now let's look at the chest because the chest this time actually they gave you a lot like improvement. They gave you a better color separation so you don't have to repaint it basically anything and they even give you like the smallest detail at the cockpit here you see those two gray part right here that's achieved by part separation is an undergate so i would just say that man like this color separation is just very good and they even gave you the white piece here at the side of the chest as well so i really say that they put a lot of effort in the color separation you basically don't need to repaint anything on this chest but uh, the articulation contain the same problem because it's a big ball joint so first if you over move it it will pop out and two because because the skirt armor is actually getting in the way so basically there's no articulation uh, like between the waist and the torso connection right here there's basically no articulation here because all the skirt armor just got into the way so we are up to the arms now so the arms um, they actually used a new way to assemble it so they changed they completely changed the way that you assemble the arms like because i look at the instruction manual so the only part that they use sticker is this red part right here and the black part right here but you know my rule towards sticker if you've been watching my review as long as it don't fall out i'm completely fine with it so let's just look at it first so first um the color separation on it they did a very good job as i said um so first the arm can lift up um it can move because there's the poly cap uh, allowed it to be moving to the front and then we can bend on a pretty good angle as well i must say that the arms they did a very good job about the articulation and the design so i would just say that the redesign the remodel is very good but they changed a thing so you know when we when we have a gamma in XG or any kind of gray, we always can pull out the hands and then, you know, switch to different hands. But this time, first, the second V don't contain you any kind of hand. And two, you basically can pull it out because in the instruction menu, uh, the hand is actually, is actually snapped into the arms. So that's why you cannot pull it out. So it's a good thing though. On the good side, it's a pretty good thing so that you can, you know, you don't have to worry about that, um, your, your hands is going to, pop out when you're holding something heavy or something like that it added more stability but um it just it just feel weird because i can't really put any any other option hand on it so really depends on you and at the back of the at the back of the arm here we have this piece right here is for you to put on the beam the beam shield so to put it on it's pretty simple just remove the tip of the uh of this red piece right here be careful don't lose it and then uh here is our shield here is our shield. Uh, it's pretty simple. You just basically find the plug, just plug it in, and then just put it back. Just put it back on the Gundam. Just give me a second. Just put it back on the Gundam, and there you go. So it's pretty easy to assemble. So, so it's pretty easy to equip on the beam shield. You just have to be careful. Don't do not lose this little red piece here because the kit doesn't give you extra. So just be careful. Now let's look at the lower part of the. V Gundam. So I would just say that uh, it's at the same as the arms, you know, this red piece here on the legs or on the waist, they have stickers, but you know, as I said before, you know the rules. So the articulation, I'll just briefly go about it. So, you know, you can move uh, the front skirt, not really the side skirt. The side skirt is pretty much no movement. And then the back skirt right here is not movable as well. So we'll just say, we'll just skip straight to the articulation. So first kicking to the front, that's absolutely fine. Kicking to the side, not really, because the side skirt cannot really move. Kicking to the back, not possible because the back skirt is not movable. And then bending though, uh, I mean, it's a pretty average articulation. I'm, I'm not saying that it's gonna be like very good or something like that. But because you know, because it's used the uh, vegan runner, so it contains the same thing as the transformation feet right here. It contains the same feature, but uh, just a quick FYI for you this Gampa does not contain any sort of core fighter or anything like that. So, this feature right here, you can just treat it like an extra movement or anything like that. And be careful though, when you over move it, it will pop out. So, uh, you can just treat it like an extra articulation or kind of like uh, extra detail or something like that. Let's take a look at the backpack right here. So the backpack right here, you can really see the design is pretty leaning towards the uh, Assault Buster backpack design-ish. You can really say that is pretty much 
pretty close to that design because the second V, as I said at the beginning, is like a parallel universe story. So there you go. So that's why it looks pretty similar. But I gotta say that the backpack color separation though is real is what really surprises me because you know I built the M91 before, which is the Bill Fighters custom. Uh, the backpack or any kind of sort of weapon, they gave me like plain white for me to recolor or they just give you like those large sticker that very hard to fit in. But this time, I gotta say that Bandai, you did a very good job about the uh, color separation right here. Although they're like pretty much like a very small detail that you might want to repaint or something like that. But overall, the color separation, I I'm, I really accept it and I really think they did a really good job. So first, let's take a look at this. So first right here, uh, they... This second V contained the same thing like the V2 Gundam, which is the Wings of Light. The Wings of Light here, um, inside they give you gray color separation. Oh my god, like, I remember when I built the M9 here and they didn't, they didn't even give me anything inside that Wing of Light. Like, that just pissed me off. And they, there is a joint right here, so I assume it might allow you to plug in the V2 uh, Wing of Light expansion set. But as I said, I'm not gonna buy it because I don't think it's worth it. So... That's pretty much it. So I would say that the Wing of Light, they did a very good job. And then let's take a look at the shield. So I will just take it off just for a individual show, uh, individual showcase right here. So the shield right now is a closed position. So it's just see, it's a pretty simple thing. But there's one thing that I want to complain is um, actually the connection for this two piece right here is pretty, it's not really tight. It's not really good, the connection. So sometimes when you're posing around, it might, you might see solution, uh, you might see situation where it's gonna fall off or something like that. For the shield though, it can expand just like the V2 AB, but um, you cannot just pull it out or anything like that. You need to switch around, but it's just a pretty simple switch. So the model kit itself, they contain another piece for you to switch around. So let me just quickly put everything back on. Just give me a second. Let me just put, quickly put everything back on it. So it's just a pretty pretty easy reassemble process right here. So it's just pretty easy. That like it, it literally not gonna take you very long. So that's what it looks like when you expand the shield. The shield, you can put it on the arm. So um, it's pretty simple. Remember the spot that I told you to put on the beam shield? You just basically, so pull this little red, little red. Oops, I think I lost it, but anyway. Um, so you basically just put this, pull this little red piece off, and then you're gonna put the shield on because there's a joint on it. You're gonna put the shield on, and there you have it. So it looks pretty fine, I must say that. Uh, the expand. So if you're someone that don't really like to pose with like beam shield or you or you like physical shield like myself, uh, you can choose this one because I think the shield design it looks pretty good. But I must say that. Uh, I still prefer the V2AB shield design, but that's another topic. Uh, at the other side here, we have this long cannon right here. So the cannon itself, there's a small movement that you can adjust. So you can adjust the position like very, just uh, very briefly. The uh, articulation on it is not like very, very awesome or something like that. But this cannon can take it off and be an individual weapon. So as you can see here, there's, there is a handle on it. So that's uh, this handle is actually allowing you to put it on the hands and then, you know, do poses as well. Uh, so depends on you. Uh, do you like it to put it on the backpack or do you like to hold it on the hands? So, uh, really depends on you. So the weapons, I think uh, they did a very good job and it's really posable as well. Now we have came to the last part. So I will just talk about the rest of the accessory. But really though, main, the main accessory is just the backpack. And the rest of it is not really that important. So first we have the beam rifle. This beam rifle right here, um, it, you know, because I look at the universal century beam rifle or like the typical beam rifle design too much. Sometimes these kind of like a small design or like, a different design really kind of, you know, uh, really, really surprises me and, you know, make me feel happy to see something different other than the normal beam, beam rival design. So right here, we use two stickers. So as you can see here, the scope and another scope down here, they are using stickers. Uh, the beam rival itself is not anything special or anything like that. It's just four pieces snapping together. Next 
if you play with the Victory series before, you know that we have two type of beam saber. We have this straight one right here and the curved one right here. So you can choose between what kind of position you want, which type of beam sabers you want. You can really mess around with the poses right here because you know you have two type of beam, uh, two type of beam sabers right here. So I would say that the the this gamma, this model kit, the the posing is just really good. Like a lot of accessory for you to mess around. And I'm gonna say that the accessory is pretty stable as well. So I would say that this premium Bandai is what worth to call a premium Bandai. Okay, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you like this review. And this time the second V show us that Bandai can make good premium Bandais. It just depends on do they have the effort? Do they have the heart to make it? So I would just say that second V is definitely a very good P Bandai and I really recommend you if you have a chance, get one, have fun. And I must say that it really, they really rework the whole XGUZ Factory Gundam top to bottom. I must say that this is a very worthy premium Bandai. So if you have an opportunity to buy it, I really suggest you buy one and have fun because you know, I just can't express like how much I'm impressed about this model. The amount of effort on this premium Manda is just really good and I really recommend you to get one. But anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed my review. Thanks for watching. Uh, leave a like on my videos and subscribe to my channel. Make sure to hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so you can get notified whenever I upload a review. Uh, I will see you guys in the next review. Goodbye.